today. It'll prepare you for watch night, and it will prepare you for the upcoming year. They talked about those who are going to be shook loose. If you can hear this and receive it from the word of God, you can stay rooted. You can stay grounded. So I offer you a word today that I know God sent because from Sunday school all the way through, the message reverberated. So I thank God for it. If it seems as though I'm picking something up from what they said, know that I didn't even print this until I got here this morning. <laughs> so I just thank God today. As I stand before you today, on the 364th day of the year, one day before New Year's Eve, okay? New Year's Eve is one of the most celebrated holidays in the world. It's celebrated more than Christmas. It's celebrated more than any holiday that you can say because it goes beyond religion. It goes beyond belief. Everybody has to have a new year. Everybody has to have a new year. If you keep living, you'll see a new year. So in major cities all across the globe, millions of people gather to focus on dropping balls. They gather to focus on fireworks and all other types of celebrations that take place on New Year's Eve as they welcome in the new year. And then some of them even make New Year's resolutions. And, and, and many of us do this because we think it's the thing to do. What he wanted me to do today was first to give you the history of the, uh, the uh, New Year's resolution. Because we, we say we're going to make resolutions to lose weight, to go back to school, uh, to, to learn a new language. Lots of different things that we say we're going to learn. Well, the history of the New Year's resolution starts as early as 2000 BC. Those in Mesopotamia, the Babylonians, the people that we read about in the Old Testament of the Bible, they started New Year's Eve, and it started because each year they would gather and they would reflect, and they would make promises to the god Janus, also the god of, of, of from January. That's where January is named from. They would make promises to this god. Now, what happened was Christianity began to spread, and as Christianity began to spread, they kept the promise of the New Year, the New Year's resolution, but it became a practice to really sit back and to, to reflect on yourself, on where you are, on where you stand with God, and to make promises to Him that you would be a better person. So we talk about a New Year's resolution, we talk about the tradition, but what is a resolution? A resolution has two meanings. One is the action of solving a problem, dispute, or contentious matter. All right. The other definition for resolution is a firm decision to do something or not to do something. Okay. So as we stand before watch night service, as we look into, into what we need to do, what we can do, what we hope to do, because we say we want, how many want to be better Christians? Yeah. Oh yeah. How many want to be better? I see all of the hands up. We want to do better. But what hinders us? When we stand right in this place and we have to be pumped and primed to praise God. What's hindering us? When we look and we say, I know I'm saved. Mm -hmm. I'm a good person. What's hindering us from praising God? We had 364 days this year alone that God kept us, that God protected us, that God was with us. So I asked what hinders us? Why do we have to have the right keys on the keyboard? Why do we have to have the right song being sung? Why do we have to wait for somebody else to pop off with praise before we can pop off with praise? So we have to really look at ourselves because it's a personal thing. Because when we stand there, we won't have remix. When we stand before God, He won't be playing the keys. That's right. Praise God. Come on. sparking off the fire to get the popcorn popping. So we have to really look at ourselves and say, what is it that hinders us? Mm -hmm. God said to tell them that what hinders the move of God in their life is unforgiveness mm -hmm. and lack of love. Oh. Our unforgiveness stems 
from when we were, as my dad used to say, knee high to an ant. When we were little kids, things happened to us that formed us into the people we are, and we have allowed them to become part of our heart, part of our bones, mm -hmm. part of our structure. Unforgiveness in that life has shaped us into people who lack trust. Yes, Lord. We, we, because of things that have occurred to us, it has shaped us into people who lack focus, who lack trust, who lack the ability to truly and completely trust God. See there? It also takes us to a point where we're unable to love as purely and cleanly as we ought to. So when we look at people, because of what happened in our past, we look and when we see something, our lens is tainted by what we've seen, and now what is really okay looks tainted somehow. Wow. Now what's really all right looks like there's something wrong with it. Come on, preacher. So we have to really look at ourselves, to examine ourselves, and to say to ourselves, God, this mirror, the man in the mirror, what can we do to fix it? Mm. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. The word that he gave, the order that he gave, it's going to be four points today. Realize, repent, reorder, and resolve. All right. All right. Come on. All right. Oh, yeah. Matthew 6 and 9 is what many of us know even without looking. It's what we call the Lord's Prayer. It's what we call the model prayer. It's listed in the middle of, Ma of Matthew 6. It's right smack in the middle of the Beatitudes. All right. Jesus was teaching the disciples and the people about actions and activities that were necessary for Christian life. Come on. I'm going to read in its entirety, and then I'm going to go back through, and I'm going to break it down a little bit. Let's start. After this manner, therefore, there we go. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, uh -huh. our Father which art in heaven, uh -huh. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, in earth as it is in heaven. Uh -huh. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive, if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. As we look at this, we see an order of life that Christ has revealed to us. First, realize, if you want to be able to have forgiveness, and you want to be able to love purely as God has said, realize that God is God and let him have the seat on the throne of your heart. Give him the honor due and realize who he is and that he supplies our daily needs. What do I mean when I say let him have the seat on the throne of your heart? Apostle said, many of us have head knowledge, but we don't have heart knowledge. Uh. We know God and we allow him to be Lord and master of our life, then that heart knowledge can guide us and lead us to where we need to be. All right. The heart knowledge of God, God sitting on the throne of your heart, supersedes any traditions you've ever been taught. Come on. It supersedes any words anybody ever said. Okay. It supersedes the place of your husband, your wife, your children, your car, mm. your job, your anything. God's place yeah. on the seat of the throne of your heart says, I love you, God, yeah. more than anything. Yes. That's we right. sing the songs, yeah. but do we live the life? Oh, God, I love you more than anything. One of my favorite songs, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. When you love God more than anything, his word guides you more than anything. His love guides you through impossible mm. places. His love allows you to forgive when forgiveness is hard. 
When you allow God to sit on the, the seat of the throne of your heart, there is nothing that shines brighter than His love and His will in your life. When we go to verse 12, it says, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Mm -hmm. This is repentance. Each and every one of us stand in need of repentance. Okay. Some right. for big things, some for small things. Uh -huh. But to God, sin actually is just sin. Uh -huh. So we have to stand in a place of repentance. First we repent, we say, God, we're sorry, and then we move forward so that we can do something else. Because once we sin, we put, we, we put a block in our way. And now we have, to, we have to detour around that block. So we're walking and we're doing what God said, then we fail to repent for something. And a lot of times, Holy Spirit will bring it to your mind. Uh -huh. He'll say to you, should you have said that that way? Should you have, said, uh -huh. should you have done that that way? Uh -huh. And our hardness of our heart right. <laughs> and the rebellion, don't call it that, but the rebellion that exists in us That's what we causes us to stand still and not repent. So repentance is necessary. From the pulpit to the parking lot, we stand daily saying, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. That's God, right. forgive me. We have to repent. We have to go back to God and say, God, I am sorry. We go to verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. If we don't reorder our steps, uh -huh. how, does he, how does he help us to avoid temptation? Ah. If we're not willing to change what we do and how we do it, then how does he keep us and deliver us from evil? See, because God knows everything about everything. So we're traveling down the road and he'll say to you, turn right here. And in us, we say, but God, I always go, go up two more blocks and then I turn right. He says, turn right here. If we could be obedient, he could deliver us from the accident that was about Come to happen. Come on, that's right. If we could just hear the word of just God like and hear what he's saying to us, it will allow us to avoid stumbling blocks. It'll allow us to avoid sin. We we pray God lead us out of to do don't lead us to temptation. We pray God deliver us from evil and he has a way to do it, but we sometimes think think we know more than him because he doesn't sit on the seat of the throne of our heart. Then we have to resolve. We have to resolve to be forgiven. Because the key to God forgiving us is that we forgive others. That's right. Amen. Amen. I know for some people, this is one of your sacred cows. This is one of those things that you think I'm good anyway because I'm saved. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things that rock you like, oh my gosh, she's saying now, if I don't forgive people, God don't forgive me. Don't trust me. Trust the word of God. And right. right. Matthew right. chapter 6, Verse 14 yes. and 15. The word of God has to convict you. The word of God has to teach you. If I stand here and say something that doesn't line up, then you need to spit that out as bones. It All wasn't right. me. Right. But if I say something that when you go home and research it, it lines up with the word of God and the will for your life, then I need for you to hear it because God is preparing us for a great thing, for that explosion. God. He's preparing hey. us for yeah. all that he has in store for us. He's kept us through 2016. It was a rough year for a lot of us. It was a lot of things that went on. It was oh, universal. It wasn't just apostle. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just prophet. It was something that God was preparing us for. And in order for him to test your metal, you know, when you have something, if you want to know if, if a tire has a leak, <laughs> you stick it in the water. Come on. See if it bones come up. <laughs> There's a leak. There's a leak. So if he never puts you in a storm, if he never puts you in a trial, oh, if he yeah. never puts you in a place oh, where, yeah. where you want to be present, Ooh, you know, yeah. in an area where you want to be tried, then how on earth do he know what's in you? God, I think That's the goal. The goal is for us to repent, to, to realize, repent, reorder, and resolve. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not a hooper and a holler. I right, you won't anyway. Oh, you preach. But I will give you Good. the word of God. Good word. He gave me to give to you. Okay. That's what we need. <laughs> so now we're on resolve. Resolve to be forgiven. The key is the key to God is being forgiven. 
Think back over the last 364 64 days of 2018. How many things has happened to us that were hurtful, harmful, or hateful? Mm. And now decide no matter how bad it was, I'll forgive those that did those things to me. Mm. So I can grow closer to God. Amen. You have to be forgiven. You have to For if we forgive men their trespasses against us, then our heavenly Father will forgive us. We'll forgive us. If we resolve to do anything else without resolving first to forgive past wrongs, we have the very high likelihood of failure and we stand in danger of missing God. Unforgiveness in your heart will keep you. Amen. Unforgiveness in your heart, I don't care who it was. I don't care what happened. You have to have a forgiving heart. It might be hard. It might be. But we have to, according to the word of God. Think about this. Jesus Christ, our Lord, exemplified this when from the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And if he could stand on the, if he could hang on the cross after being beaten, mm. after being bloody, yes. after being abused, Say so. after enduring everything that he had to endure for each one of us, yes. he didn't do it for his glory. Yes. He did it so that we would have the opportunity to come boldly before the throne of grace. He did it so that we would have the opportunity to be forgiven. I promise you, life has been difficult. I understand things have been hard, but there's nothing that happened to you that God first didn't allow to strengthen Come on. Are you telling me that God allowed things to happen to me to strengthen me? Yes. 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 Because it builds your character. Because it builds your strength. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The world says it like this. What doesn't kill you makes you strong. All right. All right. Yes, sir. That's right. So you realize, I don't care how bad it was. If you still have breath, then yes. we have a responsibility to God. God if it didn't you. take you out, you have a responsibility, a responsibility to God. You know when you have fully forgiven, when you're faced with the opportunity of the person who did the worst thing you could ever think to you, stood in front of you, could you hug him? All right. That's right. I don't oh. mean this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, could the love of God yes, sir. in your heart cause you to love them? I'm going to share a vision with you that God gave to me. I was in reflection one day because I always try to look, and it's been a few years now, <clears throat> excuse me. I always try to look to see God, where am I today? Mm -hmm. Because where I was yesterday, I might not be today. I might have had a way with thought. I might have Say had so. something going on. I'm That's still right. saved. But am I as close to you as I was? Come on. What is it in you, God? Because as I sit and look at myself, I think I'm okay. What is it you see? What is it you see that needs to be fixed about me? Yes. Yes. Shine your light from heaven on my soul. Yes. What is it you see? And God showed me a vision. And in this vision, we were in a line outside of heaven. Pretty much like the pearly gates that we see when we see the cartoons and when they show stuff on the TV. This is where the vision began. We were in a line outside of heaven and we were all waiting to go in. We were all in line waiting to go in. And as you know, as you stand in line, you know, you're speaking to people. We recognize it's heaven. We're speaking to people. We're shaking hands. We're hugging people. And we're all just loving on one another. And then I see someone who did a thing to me. That I didn't care for. Oh. And God said, you gotta love him. What right. God? You gotta love everybody to get in. That's and good. so I thought about it. And I said, okay, I'll hug him. And I gave him a hug and we kept moving forward. And we kept talking and I was getting really close up to the line. And I saw someone who had done some things to me that, that caused me to actually for a season, mistrust God. Ooh. It was so ah. bad that it caused Amen. me to turn yeah. my heart from God. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. To walk down the street and say, God, if you don't want me no more, then I don't want you either. Oh, oh, you talking the truth? Come on. Some things 
that affected me. They told me God didn't want me. They told me God couldn't use me. They told me these things and I took it to heart because it came from a person of leadership. Wow. If a person in leadership tell you something that don't line up with the word of God, oh, reject, so. it. Oh, reject it. Reject oh, it. Right. It is okay to go home and say, God, did you say that to me? Because it don't. It ain't in these sixty-six books. Oh, yeah. All right. And if it's not in there, we're not gonna go try to find the lost books, the hidden books, the extra books. If it ain't in these, it's enough to live in these sixty-six. If it ain't in these, it's okay. To but he told me that and because he was in a place of leadership it left me with a hole in my heart because I thought God didn't want me and when I came up to him God said you have to hug him and I said God I'm not going to do it and I was further back in the line oh, and God said you have to love everybody to get in so somehow he found his way to me further back in the line and he came up to me again. And God said, hug him. And I said, I'm not going to hug him. Because he did this, because he did that, because he did this, because he did that. And at that point, I was right at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. If you can picture the cloud where up in front of you is heaven and behind you is just a drop. Oh, and I stood there like this. And he said, you have to love everybody. Yeah. To make it in. It doesn't matter what they did to you. It doesn't matter what happened. Because you know what? You don't know if he repented. You don't know if we've gotten this thing right. You don't know what has happened since that time. So we say that we judge people from 2015. And in 2018, their life is straight. They're moving on. They're at the front of the line. And here I am teetering. Because he said you have to love everybody to get in That's good. and I said Lord if I see him again I'll hug him and I move forward mm -hmm. but there was still something in my heart because yeah. yeah. I you know I wanted to say it's a process that's the new thing nowadays yeah. <laughs> that right there is a process <laughs> it's a process yeah I don't know if you're from a distance that's what I want to say <laughs> but you know what it wasn't a process it was a action that's right it was an action Come on. of love Come on. all he required me to do was to forgive and to love. That's good. It was a hard thing to do because severing me from a relationship with my mom, that was a bad thing for me. But we we we, we got we got it together. We love each other. She came to my ordination. God is awesome. Okay. But when somebody threatened my very tie with God, wow. my existence, I felt really deeply about that. Yeah. I endured some things in life. I've been abused. I've been neglected. All of those things that you can mention. I've spent time in a foster home. All of these different things happened in my life. But none of those compared to this guy who I felt wronged me. See there? Because he tried to take God from me. Oh, wow. So I said to God, if I see him again, I'll hug him. So mm. I got to go forward. And then God said to me again, you'll hug him, but do you love him? Ah. Ah. And I said, God, I need your help. See there? Because you're telling me to love somebody. And if you tell me to do it, you'll give me the strength to get through it. Oh. So God, I can say by faith, I love him. <laughs> and I move forward. And I was right at the front of the line. And he came up to me with open arms. And I was able to hug him and say, I forgive you. And I moved on. And then I actually encountered that person a lot. And when I saw him, he was sitting in a pulpit. He was all dressed up. And I came into the church. God will set you up. Yes, he will. Say so. What about that hug? What about? Uh, so I went about the service. That's good. And I hugged him. And I said, I forgive you and I love you. And I went to walk away. And he said something negative. What he said didn't matter to me. Because what he said was going to kick me out of heaven. Woo! What he did was going to kick me out. That's right. Come on. Come on, doctor. And I was able to make sure. So I invite you 
wall to really look at this thing. Ooh. Repent. Get yourself together. First, realize where you are. Yeah. That you need God. There's no hope without Him. Yeah. Even if we've been saved for one month, one year, 20 years, a decade, however long, you still need God as Indeed. much today as you needed Him when you first stepped out. That's right. You still need God as much today as you did before. So here's my, 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 my wish for you guys. Really take a second before you come to watch, watch night tomorrow. Before you do all of this, before we sit and make another promise to God that we're not going to keep. Uh oh. oh Say something. Before we get to a point where we're up in front of the church, caught up in the music, and I love to praise y'all already know. Yes. Okay? I love to praise them. But it's not how high you jump, it's how straight you walk when you come when down. When you come down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. When I'm going through the wall, the lady keep hitting me with the basket. God ain't oh, there. Yeah. Right the music ain't there. God is. The music ain't there. God is going to cause me to react like I'm supposed to. I'm going to give you one more thing. I was in the line and this little boy was running around with them hard striped right shoes that feel like a wood bottom. And he was just kicking people. He was about three years old, old enough to know better. He was kicking people. <laughs> He was kicking. He was just going up to people and kicking. Oh, that hurt! They said, "Ow, that hurt!" He kicked one. They said, "That really hurt." And he would just laugh. And he came up to me and he drew his foot back. And I said to him, "If you kick me, I'm going to show you what happens when you kick people." <laughs> well, then. amen. Well, you'll get kicked back. <laughs> and she finally yeah. got him in control. Was I gonna kick him? Yes. Yeah. 
What will we do mm. as we look around? As we look in go straight down 74 and I started driving and I was like, okay, I remember all of this. I used to live here. I got this. And then something said you're going the wrong way. I said, devil, you a liar. Right. Because God told me to go this way. Right. So I know that the way he told me to go is the way that I'm supposed to go. So I'm going to keep going until it looks right or until he speaks. You're not going to cause me to turn. That's what we have to do. As we're walking out life and oh, troubles yes. come, as we're walking out life and things don't look like we thought they would, we come have on. to keep listening for the word of God come for on. the next direction. If we keep us, uh, we keep unforgiveness out of our heart, out of our heart, and love in our heart, we'll be able to heal. If we keep ourselves focused, the word of God, I know that you guys probably read the, the Lord's Prayer and never saw it this way. I know that we read it as the model prayer is what we say, but as we look at it, look at his instructions for your life. Honor God. Realize who he is. Mm -hmm. Repent of your sins. Uh -huh. Allow him to provide and recognize that we have to love. We have to forgive because if unforgiveness sits in the seat of our heart, God can if love, if love, if unloving kindness sits in the seat of our heart, God can. If our children, if our husbands, if our jobs, if our income, if our anything sits in that place, God can't. Don't come here every Sunday and praise on top of problems. Don't come here every Sunday and praise on top of struggles. Come here every Sunday with a willingness to let it all go so that God can fill you. Come here with a willingness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank because you. he has everything that you need to survive. Oh, yeah. He has everything that you need to make it. He has everything. Acknowledge that it's not your job. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. It's not your kids. It's following God. If you put him first, everything falls in line. Does the word of God not say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these shall be added. That's his word to us. Seek him, Seek him first. And don't think that you already got it. Right. There were two people that I can read in the Bible that already had it. Enoch walked to, walked to heaven. Uh huh. And he prepared a chariot for Elijah. If you haven't seen any stairways leading up, <laughs> and no fiery chariots chariot <laughs> landed beside you, you still got one. You still got one. Amen. <laughs>